As the seventh overall pick, Jonathan Kuminga showed up in the game of his life, dropping a timely 25 piece. The Warriors, who were missing Clay Thompson on the second night of a back to back, as well as their perennial DPOY candidate in Draymond Green, took down the top heavy Chicago Bulls by a vicious 42 points. Unfortunately, Zach Levine went down in the opening minutes, but missing some of their biggest pieces themselves, the deeply talented dubs were clearly out to prove something to the rest of the NBA. Stay tuned to see how the Golden State Warriors just made a statement by upsetting the Chicago Bulls and what it could imply in the long run and also an in-depth breakdown of their rookie sensation. Before continuing, only 11.4% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds, it makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. I left a link in the description for both those platforms. The recently activated Clay Thompson, who's played 20 minutes per game over three outings so far, is averaging 14 points on 35% shooting from three point range. But against Chicago, coach Steve Kerr was resting Thompson on the second night of a back to back. The team was also missing the backbone to their defense in Draymond Green with a calf injury, as well as the young glove Gary Payton II, who had lower back tightness. From Andrew Wiggins dropping 21, on a ridiculously efficient 8 for 11 shooting to Steph hitting four triples and Jordan Poole being a game high by far plus 38. Don't get it twisted, those three were far from the only contributors in the dubs blowout against Chicago. Kavon 99 hands Looney had a typical double-double of 10 points and 12 rebounds in 24 minutes while also tallying four assists while turning it over zero times at the five spot. Big credit to Looney for filling in for Draymond exceptionally, and it was nice to see the greatest shooter of all time knock down four timely triples. We could go in depth on a number of players for Golden State, but Jonathan Kuminga adapting to the NBA game right in front of our eyes? That was most noteworthy on Friday night. On Madison Street in Chicago, Kuminga finished with 25 points on 10 of 12 shooting, which included a perfect 8 of 8 clip on twos and 2 of 4 on threes. Up to this point, John's shooting just 29.3 from deep range on low volume, a shot that needs reinforcement in terms of his form and mechanics. And you'd like to see Kuminga attempting more in-game triples just to get some more reps under his belt. Having said that, the kid's not even old enough to drink at age 19. Yet, Kuminga's already flashing the potential to be one of the best two-way wing players in the NBA over the next few years. Every time Steve Kerr gives him an opportunity to prove his abilities, Kuminga's ceiling gets higher and higher to the point where his theoretical peak form induces mouth-watering from Warriors fans envisioning that potential. As Kerr's alluded to in the past, first-year talents on title contending rosters don't usually get that much playing time, and given the depth the Warriors have, they haven't rushed the development of a rookie despite the fact that he was such a high pick, and Golden State's often content with stashing him deep at the end of the bench. But by virtue of the fact that he's six foot eight with a 38 inch vertical jump and making huge strides in his development, that's earned Kuminga a boatload of trust from his coach. We'll get to a further breakdown on Kuminga, which you can't miss, but what a turnaround for the dubs after they were slapped by the Milwaukee Bucks on Thursday night. In that game, the Warriors trailed 77-38 at half, and less than 24 hours later, Golden State entered the visitors' locker room at half, leading 78-47 against the top seed in the Eastern Conference. It was all Warriors from the jump, a day after showing no offensive ability whatsoever and down three top rotation guys, the dubs came out of the gates firing with made threes on four of their first five possessions. Golden State shot 56% from the fields and 43.9% from the three-point line, dished out 39 dimes to just seven turnovers, winning 138-96. Conversely, it was a nightmare of a game for Chicago fans, losing Levine to a knee injury in the opening minutes, and they ended up being booed off the court by halftime. Chicago made just 10 of their 38 three-pointers, chalking up to 26.3%, after taking care of the Pistons by 46. Even though Levine isn't expected to miss a significant chunk of time with the MCL injury, it was the second straight game where the number one seed out east lost by 25 plus points. We'll see if the shorthanded Bulls can bounce back in Boston tonight. But for the Warriors, who entered the game having lost 4 of 5, in case anyone was wondering if they'd lost their mojo, that doesn't seem to be the case whatsoever. Now for a further in-depth analysis on Jonathan Kuminga. 
based off his evident encore performance in terms of his shooting, John seems to be more comfortable spotting up instead of pulling up. Defensive game plans seem to be geared towards leaving him open on the perimeter, so Kuminga knocking down two of his four open shots on an ESPN headliner will give defenses game planning for him a bit more to consider. For the time being, Kuminga's at his best mercilessly attacking the paint downhill and exploding at the rim. JK is almost equally comfortable operating in the low post, where he's able to make use of his strength, especially against miniature defenders. Given his loud impact, it's easy to forget Kuminga's receiving just 10 minutes per game of playing time. It's arguable as to whether or not he should be getting more minutes. The rookie can be a weapon off the bench on both ends of the floor, no matter how many minutes he's getting, and given he could be a secret weapon come playoff time, you don't want there to be too much tape on him for opponents to scout. Kuminga's springiness after catching the ball can light up arenas, regardless of whether he's playing in the Bay Area or not. Very few teenagers in the history of the NBA have had such a combination of excellent hands and fluid hops like JK. The NBA's most elite defenders will likely be more conservative on their closeouts towards Kuminga but if someone commits the mistake of using too much of their forward momentum, the Rook has flashed decisiveness which punishes such decisions. The way Jonathan seamlessly elevates off the hardwood, soaring towards the rim, it's those attacks which display his grace and smoothness in the air that just feels inherently natural. Mix those acrobatics in with a soft touch and a near perfect finishing arsenal with either hand, and it's safe to say Kuminga's become a potent force attack in the bucket. Kuminga is a type of player who the Warriors haven't had throughout the entirety of their dynasty run. According to Cleaning the Glass, Jonathan's shots at the rim only make up 52% of his total attempts, which is in the 58th percentile for his position. There's no excuse for that number not being higher, and there's no denying that once his minutes ramp up and his confidence level reaches its peak, that percentage of attempts at the rim should definitely go up. While Kuminga's had his moments of unnecessarily forcing the issue, give him credit for learning from such mistakes at a fast rate. Lessons the 19-year-old has learned have involved learning how to change the pace of his attacks, stopping just short of the rim, and using his soft touch on runners slash floaters and turnaround jump hooks, combined with shockingly polished footwork. Having said that, until he adds a pull-up jumper to his repertoire from beyond the arc, and in the mid-range, JK as the ball handler in a traditional pick and roll, with the screener being your run-of-the-mill big man, won't be an efficient way of running offense. Game plans will either be geared toward being switch happy, or cheating under the screens with opposing bigs having no problem dropping back. That's the reason why having Stephen Curry set inverted screens for Kuminga is the better usage of Kuminga as a pick and roll operator. More significantly than his bucket getting, it's been the flashes of facilitating competence that's contributed to Kuminga perfectly fitting in within the flow of the offense. To survive as a warrior rotation player, it's required for a player to be able to pass on some level, and Kuminga's not only met those mandates, man's got some legit poise setting up his teammates. For example, on this possession, John examines the court, waiting till he's double teamed, his height over his primary defender allows him to see everything going on around him, Nemanja Bialica dives to the rim as a result of the extra defender committing to Kuminga, and John has no problem whipping the pass to Belly. Next, when Golden State whips out one of their go-to play sets called Motion Week, Kuminga shows awareness and instincts beyond his years. Watch him place the screen for Jordan Poole on the wing, knowing that he's initially on the incorrect side of the screen, and then flips the screen, turning the action into an empty side pick and roll. After receiving the pocket pass on the roll, anticipating help side rotation, he finds JTA on the baseline cut for the layup. Another factor of Kuminga's feel for the game is his knowingness of when to slip screens and just dive toward the rim. Impulsive, seemingly habitual actions like the one on your screen right now have also been on display defensively. The versatile phenom in Kuminga can be thrown out there against a whole spectrum of positions. His reach allows him to easily cover ground, which completely throws off smaller guards and makes opposing wings scrap for every bucket they get. Given his strength and physicality, the Rook also survives in the post against bigs. More so than his natural abilities, his base fundamentals and discipline have stood out the most, especially when he's forced to guard marquee stars. Watch how Kuminga navigates around the dribble handoff and cuts off DeMar DeRozan's right, stopping him from turning the corner. He stays with DeRozan using active feet and fluid hips. He uses a measured and effective contest to force a shot that falls short. 
On another possession, Kuminga subs into the Draymond Green role of being a versatile operator, picking up three quarters of the court and putting pressure on the ball, switching on to anyone, including bigs in the low post, and helping wherever is needed. It's a very small sample size, but during Kuminga's 290 minutes on the floor this year, the Warriors have been 8 points per 100 possessions better defensively. For their championship aspirations to be realized, Golden State doesn't need Kuminga to be Rookie of the Year caliber. However, they've been giving the kids specialized responsibilities, and Kuminga's made the most out of the opportunities he's been given. So far, Jonathan is living proof that the Warriors' method of contending while developing, which was doubted and ridiculed so much during the offseason, has been working. What's the most intriguing aspect to Jonathan Kuminga's upside? Best answer down below in the comments earns next video shout out. The top five commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive NBA merchandise for free of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Young Mellow 18 who says what I find most impressive about the Nuggets, apart from Jokic, is how Jeff Green is still able to jump so high at age 35. Creative answer from Young Mello. Appreciate every take. I hope you have a great one. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.